Okay, so uh, yeah, no, okay, cool. Okay, so uh, today my uh, sort of the objective of of uh, of the talk or, or the conversation will be to try and raise some questions. Uh, what I want to do is raise some questions which I encountered during the practice phase, which has led me to kind of question how we use semiotics, how we sort of make claims about semiotics. So what I'm going to do here is, is, is showcase uh, sort of the methodology with all the data, with all the evidence, so, so that we can all have, have a critique of, of the claims that we sort of, uh, uh, you know, that we, uh, that we often sort of make. So there are four parts. I was going to sort of explain a bit about semiotics, but I've, I've, I've but since you've done the job, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll be extremely brief uh, with, uh, in terms of, uh, of semiotics and the approach. I think it would be best if we look at the data and, and sort of have some fun. Uh, I, I, and for this I'm going to be using uh, the case study of, of, of a color. So color is, so this isn't a research into color. This is a, re, this is a project about, uh, about trying to sort of investigate uh, you know, the method. So this can be uh, transplanted to, to sort of, of advertising, I mean, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and the first thing, I mean, when, uh, when you land at the airport, what, because of, of my sort of obsession with this damn color, the first thing which I sort of noted was there's this usage of colors and the materials. So there's a granite. This is uh, the immigration uh, sort, of, sort of desk. You've got granite. You've got stainless steel. Uh, you've got red. You've got blue, and it is yellow, which is being used as as a cautionary color. You know, uh, but quite interestingly, that that line is made, which you can possibly see over here. That line is actually a brass line. So it's quite interesting how all all already. We use the term color, but it, it kind of, you know, we are using yellow as a word. This, was all, this is almost kind of an, an orangish yellow. And then there's, 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 there's the brass, you know. So, uh, so the problems uh, in terms of how, how colors circulate. So, uh, Signs signifies and signified. So, what is a sign? Anything is is a sign, right? I'm a sign. You know, the signifiers are are the color of my my skin, my voice, my hair, right? My clothes, etc., etc. And the signified are uh, so the signified were by right, that uh, that I'm a researcher, you know, status, etc., etc. So, I mean, very very briefly to sort of understand. Sort of, uh, sort of the terrain. Uh, yeah, fairly clear. So, when we talk about, and this is more or less the approach used in the industry, right? Which is, we we try to sell the idea that meaning is important because it is placed in culture, uh, and uh, and within the culture you have relevant signs and the symbols which we should use. Uh, and semiotics is, is the approach, and, I, and this largely, at least, we have the consensus here, you know. Uh, and therefore, then, color semiotics would be then focused on the role of color. Uh, now, you uh, last year you 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 would have heard about this famous uh, coat rolling, which has given a Pantone uh, shade uh, to uh, to, uh, to to uh, which has been awarded uh, 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 to Cadbury's. Right, so, so then there was this whole surfeit of the articles about the importance of color, I mean, et cetera, et cetera. So let's kind of look at it, right? So typically in a client, in a real world scenario, what we get is literally a brief, which is over here, which most of us never sort of understand, right? Uh, we, we, we often start off by first looking at the category, okay, where is the category, what do we want to do? We then typically would do a deep dive of the culture. We would do 
I mean, I would typically do a mythology sort of exploration first, including history. Uh, from there, uh, then I would look at the, at, at the politics of, of the signs, the politics of, of the signifiers. Uh, and the signified, I would look at popular culture and I would look at consumer sort of the discourses. Uh, uh, and then I would, and for the application in terms of, of the design, I would then look at a, a visual analysis of, of the objects, both, both the signifiers, the, the individual materials, as well as the iconography, I mean, etc. So for color, what we're looking here is a sensorial signs and the symbols. Now, uh, in terms of color, the problem we have is, like I had, I had explained, you know, this whole, the way color really operates, because it is, it is material before it is cultural, right? It is so, so but this is important. Uh, so from there, we would, we would then define some opportunity platforms, and that's when we would go into the creative strategy here. Right, so if you look at the quantum of the work, it is mostly here. And the creative application is actually very, very minimal. And this is, I mean, having worked in, uh, in sort of in a leading brand design, uh, brand, sorry, branding design sort of agency, this, this, this used to be the quantum of the work. So typically a billing would be, let's say, about 100,000 pounds for the strategy and for the development of which uh, 70,000 pounds would be for semiotics and for the research. Only 30,000 for, for sort of this end of, of, of the work. Uh, and typically the output, so, so yesterday we had this question of what can you do, you know, with, with semiotics the outputs, you know, we could do a cultural trends and their implications for design or for, for the branding, we could do a cultural audit, most of it we have kind of talked about, right? So, so let's kind of let's 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 deal with uh, with the meat here. So, yellow, right? What I would argue is that before it it is a cultural object, it is first a, uh, it is first a natural object, right? It is you have to to sort of understand physics. Right? You have the best packaging, but if the lighting where the packaging will be displayed is different. I'm sorry, right? So, 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 when you deal with packaging, you have to know your context, right? So, which includes the lighting, which which includes the rest of the colors. Uh, so, 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 if I was to look at nature, I find that, and this is where we find how we start making cultural meanings. There is the notion of 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 of, of the color and. Within nature, we have things like weeds, right? We have gold, we have sun, we have got jaundice, we have got flames, we have got autumn, right? And so, so, so our brain accumulates all of these stimulus, right? Which we sort of, which is acquired over a period of time. And then also there is there are some cultural notions. So in specific cultures, there are certain meanings around around the color, fear and loathing, right? There is also status and sort of wealth. There is also sort of, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the uncultured, which is why often yellow is quite a problematic color in terms of, of, the, of, of the usage. You know, uh, so what we see is that from nature, we have this little, it is more of, of, uh, of a spectrum than a neat binary. You know, that you move from this whole spring towards autumn, where you have the, you know, the color. In other countries, in the tropical countries, yellow works with green, quite sort of, of interestingly. Uh, so, so, so this is just a sampling of the way we sort of experience yellow in uh, in uh, uh, in the natural sort of, of world. Let's look at culture now, and this, of course, I I am deliberately restricting uh, this to the Western culture. Is that within the Western culture, yellow has been quite a problematic uh, sort of pigment. So during the Renaissance age. 
quite interestingly, yellow was a color. So Jews had to wear, had, had, to, had, had, to, sew, had to sew a yellow circle on their uh, clothes. Uh, the prostitutes had to wear yellow clothes. Right, so it's, it's, it's quite interesting. So we have this almost, we have, uh, we, have, uh, we have a primordial connection with the color. We also have these culturally grounded where, where, where a color has been, has been, has been assigned a, you know, a meaning, right? Uh, then we also had yellow as being a substitute for gold. So in the representation of the Virgin sort of, of Mary, you have blue and, and yellow, right? Uh, and let's be, oh, sorry. And we see that the usage of the color yellow, right, for the, for the demarcation of the Jews, which happened in the Renaissance period, makes a, it sort of appears again, right. So when we talk about trends, this is one of the issues that I have with trends: is, is that how do we make claims about trends? You know, how do we know when a, when a trend is kind of emerging, right? Where is where is this flow of of the trend? within the politics, within the culture, within aesthetics. Uh, now we find within the modern world, it has quite a interesting sort of usage. It, is, it isn't a color that would be used in the automobiles. It is only used for certain types of, of the cars, right? Uh, but then on the other hand, it is used among, uh, it is used, it, uh, sort of, it is, it is, it is, it is the color uh, for for uh, for the ambulances, right? So you find this really odd flow and this intertextuality which is happening here. Uh, but then on the other hand, uh, it's also a, a color for a caution, not red. Right? You know why? There's actually a material. There's there's you have to sort of go back to physics. So in the spectrum, yellow is has 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 the most visibility in the spectrum. So for the purposes of safety, it is, it is important to, to, to sort of use the color, right? So it's, 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 so we see here there is a cultural, uh, sorry, there is a natural connotation with, with the patterns of the season. There's a cultural usage, but there's also a rational usage of the color, right? So how should brands use this? So, so this method was actually developed for a color company which wanted to own certain shades and the hues. And they said that we want to be able to sell, uh, to sort of create the colors. So the question was, how do we then signify that this color means this? So we first said, look, first of all, this is, this is a problem. Right? Okay. So when we just laid out all the meanings within culture and within nature, what we find is that yellow is actually a polymorphic color, right? It is, there is no sort of opposition to the color, right? It, it, so, and this is within the Western world. So the problem that I have is that when we constantly fall prey to this whole notion of the, of the binary. I don't think we, we look far enough. I don't think we, we look wide enough before we easily jump because it is much easier to say this isn't that, right? Okay, so we see that there's a whole range of the meanings from the negative over here to, to the positive. Yep, okay. So, So uh, this particular company makes colors for the personal care category. So they are the global supplier for every food, every drink, every cosmetic. I mean, you, you sort of name, name, name a thing. And this is that we want to be, to be able to offer at our clients specific shades based on their brand uh, sort of essence, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, let's, let's, so, so let's look at, at the personal care category within the UK. Uh, so if the idea is to use yellow, because it is an important color for, for the category, 
uh, what we see is that it has this very strong and also a polarizing uh, sort of the denotations and connotations. So when we develop a color, we have got to, to be careful of where it is being used, how it is being used, right? So, uh, so, so we started looking at the history of the personal care category and, and sort of anyone who knows the history of the personal care category knows that, that, that the category evolved from, from industrial efficacy. The first soaps were sold on the basis of this will clean, I mean these, these were sold as bars of chemicals, right? Slowly as uh, post-war, you know, you have this product sort of the differentiation uh, and it moves into sort of luxury and now we are in this space of the natural, the organic and blah, 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 right? So, good. And today, personal care in the West is moving beyond the organic cleanser. It is, it is now, the trend is towards things that you can consume. So these are as natural as you would feel that, gosh, I, I wish I could drink this. Right, so it's quite interesting. So the, the personal care category itself is, is kind of shifting. So how do you then start making these links here? How do you, you assign these meanings with hues and, and, with, and with the shades? Uh, so if you look at, at the personal care category, a sampling, we see that it sort of moves from one, one end to the other. You have, you have in sort of luxury, it is quite autumnal. Uh, you know, deals with the natural uh, codes of, of the maturation. Then on, on the other hand, it is used in quite this raucous, loud, uh, sort of the summer connotations. And then you have these, these sort of industrial connotations, right? Uh, you, so look at this, you have this whole industrial connotation and, and I will explain why, why I've given these, these specific codes. Uh, and then you have this spring and you have a muted spring. I mean, unfortunately, because you don't have the physical product, you know, a lot of the, of the meaning is, is, is being lost here. Um, so if you look at where does the whole industrial codes come from? It is, it is, it is, it is not, it isn't, you know, the yellow. It is the way yellow interacts with black or with gray. So now it's quite interesting. So the same color can acquire a completely different meaning when it is placed. Yes, please. Sorry. Is that working? Yeah. You're talking about the industrial in terms yeah. of the combination of the yellow and the black, yeah. but it's very natural actually because if you look at a nature but and the color of the wasp, for that's, instance, that's, that's the same one, again, exact I mean, one. I mean, uh, in uh, sort of in the modern world, again, the context. How often do we come in in contact with the with uh, with the wasps? You see, so the, so so when we try to develop. A strategy. We have, we have got to be careful uh, in terms of of the examples we will pick here. You know, so the context. So the semiotics is always interested in the context. Signs don't exist in 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 isolation. Most these days, people sort of engage with these are these are things available in the market, right? So 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 and and these are the analogous categories, right? So um, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Uh, So, what we so so we sort of laid out the sort of the brands uh, in uh, uh, in the coding, and what we sort of uncovered was that that there were broadly four codes which were in operation. One was the performance and the function, which is which is quite a recessive code. Then there is the fake and the artificial, sort of over here. 
Then there's the milk and the starch, and there's, there's the adult, the purity, and oil codes, which are in circulation. Uh, what happens here is that something interesting, uh, so in terms of its links with, with sort of analogous categories, as well as, as nature, you've, we find that you have these industrial codes versus you have these summer, spring codes, and you have these autumnal codes. And, and again, these, these aren't neat spaces. You know, they, they kind of move, move about. Uh, but something interesting sort of happens here. The codes actually shift the moment you open the bottles. Because you're not just engaging with the packaging, you're also engaging with the actual product. Right? And so this is quite interesting for a brand, the, because we are, again, forgetting the context. The context of, of, of the meaning making of the brand isn't merely the packaging. It is, it is, the, it is the moment of the truth when you open it and, and you sort of pour it. What you find here is that this then, uh, then we looked at the fragrances. What are the fragrances? And we had used a color sort of expert. And she then pushed them further. She sort of moved them, them about. So we can see here the brands kind of shifting from one space to the other, depending on, upon that sort of moment of, of the truth. Right. Uh, so yes, so in terms of the nature, right? In nature, it has, uh, this has a double connotation. One is of, of the industrious bee, right? It is uh, versus versus the toxic uh, sort of frogs, you know. So there's this whole toxicity, there's, there's the danger sort of element, there's the industrial kind of element, which, which then plays out when people actually take, take the product out. So it sort of looks like, like this uh, uh, sort, of, sort of, you know, uh, some kind of, of radio sort of active uh, sort of liquid, you know. Uh, but then on the other hand, if you open the bottles of, of, of the natural oil, they actually start mimicking sort of oil. You know, they start smelling like oils. Uh, uh, and then you have the nature's milk, which is pushing it towards, 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 towards a more... Uh, so the codes there are... So things such as, you know, uh, sort of the mother's milk, you know, milk, milk in, in, in sort of general. Uh, you have the notion of the care, uh, sort of, therefore. Uh, and, and, and of course, you know, uh, sort of the starchiness. And you'll find some brands who try to mimic this, but they'll have this slight gloss, almost like, an, uh, like a slick, which floats on this, and, 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 and it pushes it back into the industrial. So you have a, have a lot of the brands. So when people make these, when the consumers have this feedback that, that this doesn't feel right, often we would we'll, we'll blame it on the packaging or on the advertising. But no one's looking at, at the last sort of mile here. You know. that, 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 so the claim here is that the meaning is being made across a series of the steps. And that is shaping the, the, the expectations it is shaping the connotations that people are, are kind of uh, of sharing. So, uh, so what we found here was that these are your broad sort of opportunity areas, and therefore we can now start thinking of hues. How do we differentiate with the hues? Of, of, of the personal care, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, 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 in terms of the dyes. What kind of a brief then should be given to the creative in terms of the, of the packaging? So this is an inverse way of looking at the brand. So this is literally building the, building, building, you know, the brand sort of ground up and saying that this is where, where it is. Uh, this is the kind of a packaging. These are the spaces in, in the supermarket. So these are the, the contexts where your products will be placed. So, so your product differentiation will have these issues. 
And these would be the brand, sort of the meanings that you can work with. Uh, so the opportunity sort of areas are, were, were over here, which is to push it away from the fake and, and the artificial, moving it more towards the everyday function. And this would appeal largely to a masculine sort of the market. Uh, this, this, on the other hand, by pushing the products further down here, uh, in terms of, of the dyes, you can have for a, for a more mass market synthetic luxury. Uh, and in terms of the premium, you've got sort of the natural oil. So, so the positioning could be over here, here, and here. So these, 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 these are the positions that we had identified where we can then start looking at, at sort of the hues, the shades. Uh, so yeah, so back to, to the process and so in terms of, 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 of the discussions, the questions that came about in the process was uh, that we, we sort of live in this media saturated world but the meanings that when that the brands making claims about owning or, or brand managers wanting to, to own is quite a problematic uh, sort of, uh, of, of the hypothesis to, to, uh, to start with. Uh, then, it, then there's also the sort of, of, of agenda setting function of the media, which can actually shape, shape the meaning of your product. Uh, then there's this huge, particularly with color, there's the problem of, of texts, of the index. You know, particularly what kind of an indexical Value. So the more it pushes it towards the fake and the and the artificial, the sort of indexically, it is saying it is a chemical, you know. And so the reason why you have these this sort of emergent trend is because indexically it is closer to sort of oils, right? In this, in a certain way, it is much better to be sort of indexical uh, there. Uh, so yeah, uh, and sort of then how do we then design a brand, uh, particularly sort of around color? I have, I have huge problems with, uh, with any uh, semiotic claims about color because I, I, I am not convinced that people actually, uh, you know, that color has that kind of a trigger because there's a lot more that, that goes on here. Um, and most importantly, you know, who is looking at it, how, what context, what was the lighting, what were the others sort of the brands, and I think this is, this is quite a minefield. So, and I thought that this group may have some, some, some answers here. Okay, thank you. <laughs>